Roll. Parshat Balak. And this parsha is focused on the fact of how Boli Barak Shemo watches over us. The Umoto Ram have, they think of all different ways how to get rid of us. And Boli Barak Shemo stands in their way. That's really what this whole parsha is all about. Three times he tried to curse us and all three times Boi Barak Shmo didn't let it and instead of a curse it was a blessing. The, our Chachamim tell us that all of his blessings turned back into a curse. Only one thing didn't turn back into a curse. And that was the blessing that he said Matovu Olecha Yaakov Mishkanesecha Yisrael. Which means how great and beautiful is the tents of Yaakov and the dwellings of Yisrael. This in state of Racha did not turn into a curse. So the question is why? Why was it that all the other things turned into a curse? And this state of Racha. So the reason is, they explain, because even though Bole Yitbarak Shemo forced him to give a blessing, but in his heart, he really wanted a curse. It wasn't that his mouth and his heart was the same. His mouthpiece spoke bracha, but his heart and what he really wanted was to curse. So therefore, it didn't last. It couldn't last, the bracha. In order for bracha to last, it has to be that the bracha comes from the heart and from the mouth. I remember I was once sitting by my grandfather and someone came in for a bracha. About a, it was <coughs> an illness in the family. And my grandfather was asking all about the illness and listening. It took a good five minutes. And then he gave him a, a bracha. So when he left, I asked my grandfather, excuse me, grandpa, you're not a doctor. So what was important to know about all the information about the illness? So my grandfather said that because when he came in and asked me for a bracha, my heart, I didn't feel my heart feeling for him yet. I had to make my heart to feel his pain. So as he was talking and describing the illness and I was telling him and asking him, I was working on making sure my heart should feel his pain. And when I felt his pain... <coughs> Which grandfather? When I felt his pain, then I gave the bracha. A bracha has to be connected mouth with heart. If it's mouth alone, it could, it could, it could happen, but it can't last. And... and the heart, what he really wants to do, takes over. So now the question is, why, why was Matovo Alecha Yaakov Mishkanesecha Why was this, why did this last? I would like to answer. Because he knew very well that what a shul is expecting from us, the achayut, What's a good English word for Achayut? Obligation. The obligation and responsibility of what a shoe is all about, he knew. In other words, like this, the Gemara says, if someone walks by a shoe because he's late to work and woke up late and didn't pray in the shoe, he's a shachen la, he's a bad neighbor. One time, one time he passed by the shoe and didn't go into the shoe to pray because he came back from a chatana late, he was late, and he rushed and put on his tulin and his talit, and he rushed out. He's called a bad neighbor. And the Mara says not such good things about a bad neighbor. Not such good things. A shoe is, is a live item. And when you walk by the shoe and you don't go in. While they're praying. While they're praying, then why aren't you going in? No, if you go out just to show it's <laughs> True. If there's more than one shul, it's true, you could say that. 
When you pass the shul, you say, I'm sorry, I have to go on to my next shul. But you have to understand, that's one thing. The next thing that a shul expects an obligation, you have to keep its kedusha. If you go in to a shiur and you violate the kedusha of the Beit HaKnesim, for instance, you do business in the shul, you answer your cell phone and text back business deals, you're violating the kedusha of the shul. The shul expects you to come in and pray. Not coming in to pray. So what are you coming for? Who asked you to be here? What are you doing here? Can the, I the business? Russia? Yes. Well, let me just continue on. True story happened last week. Someone came over to me and told me he was in a class by a very, very prominent rabbi in a very prominent place. And the fellow next to him with his right hand was writing notes of what he was hearing from the rabbi. In the left hand, he had a smartphone and was listening to the, uh, watching the news. And then when the news was over, he was playing a game. Right hand, writing the Torah, and left hand. Could you tell me? Ambidextrous. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? Could you, could you imagine? This is what I told him. He said, come here, let me see. Could that be kavod to the betach nesed? Could that be vote to the betach nesed? No, that's not... Uh... Not true, not true. Or someone walks, is he, is he, or someone he walks into shul in yeah. shorts. In shorts, he comes out of the gym, he just had a game, and he wants a chat mincha. It's perfect timing. He comes running in with his shorts and sneakers, and this, and he's going to pray. Is that the kavod of the shul? Bill Am knew all this. So Bill Am said, I'm giving a strong bracha. They shall have beautiful shoes. Gorgeous shoes. Because the more beautiful that the shoe is, and the more gorgeous the shoe is, and the more prosperous the shoe is, is the greater achayut on us to make sure it stays that way. That's why he gave it bracha with the full heart. Because he knew what the obligations he figured then. Man, I can be able to. The obligation. How can they fulfill the obligation? You know what a shul expects? You know what it expects? We don't know what it expects. For instance, Svarim. You know, I'm always coming to shul and you see they're blind up with this and that. Come on. There's, there's a bookcase. Put them away. Put them away. Make the place. Uh, you see, guy, you just, whoosh, whoosh, puts it down on the table and leaves it there. Filthy dish. What are you doing? Lazy to get up and put it into the garbage. But lazy. These are all things that Bilam knew was going to happen. So Bilam gave a bracha. Not tovo, and the nicer the shul, the better, and the better. Yeah. But now I'm going to give you a, a true story on the other side of the coin. You ready? This is a true story that happened this past Thursday. This is a fellow that calls me up with all his questions. And this. He calls me up and says, Rabbi, I have to tell you a story and have with me unbelievable. This fellow. Is very marked to always dabble with a minyan. I mean, let's say he has to fly out to New Orleans. And there's no minyan in New Orleans. He'll get off the plane. He'll get off the plane in a closer city where there is a minyan. Go to the minyan and pray, and then continue to take the next plane out. He's right now in Grand Canyon. He travels an hour and a half to get to a mincha mountain. This is his thing. He's been doing it years. Not today, tomorrow, yes. He's in Grand Canyon. He's on the way to, to Mincha. He took gave himself two hours, just in case. The highway is a standstill. <clears throat> there was an accident up ahead. No one's moving. He turns on his ways. What well, he says, before three hours, forget about it. Wow. <laughs> What you do? And sure enough, the people are getting out of the car. Some are sitting on top of the roof yeah, already. Picnicking. There's a minyan on the highway. Right. Right. No, no. Listen to what happened. You can't dream what happened. Listen to the story. Like, so he goes back into his car and opens up his tilium. <clears throat> and then he says, if the same thing says, Rabboni should be born of Allah, I'm giving $100 to Tzedakah if you could get me to Mincha. The time is ticking. And he calls the tilium. And he sees two police cars show up. What are they there for? To give out drinks to the people. They came with cold drinks. 
He left the people. So he gets out of his car. He goes off to the policeman and says like this. I'm a paramedic, and he shows him that he has the license. Maybe they need me up front by where the accident is. The policeman says, you know, you're right. Good idea. Get into your car. Just follow us. Wow. So on the shoulder, <laughs> on the shoulder, one car in front, police car in front of me, one police car in front They come to the front of the line where all that traveling, they come to the front, the, the ambulance is just pulling away. Just this second pulling away. The policeman says, thank you for offering. We don't need you. Go. And away he shoots up, puts on the gas pedal to 90, 90 miles an hour, and comes six minutes before me. Wow. wow, that's a great wow. hundred thousand, don't forget. Hundred dollars. No, I already asked him for the hundred thousand. Oh. I already told him I want to get stuck up. <laughs> <laughs> that I did already, don't worry about it again. I'm also a salesman. I also wow. make sales. <laughs> that I asked to myself. Can I but tell that can I tell that story to somebody tonight? Of course. It's, it's a true from, story. It's from your congregation. It's a crazy thing. From, from my people that asked me. the Grand Canyon. It was Grand Canyon. You know? But he did what he did. But hear what he did. He first he sat in the car, he said to him, and he said, Boy Alam, if I, you get me to Mincha in time, I'm giving on the thousand staka. And then he notices two police cars pull up with drinks to give out. And he thinks of this idea with the paramedic. He's a real paramedic. He works for yeah. us. That's how he's a paramedic. Yeah. You know, Joe? That shit's not true. Oh, wow. <laughs> and they took, no, he thought they would say, who needs you? He said, put him with some front. That's what he thought they would tell. No, they said, you're right, come, we'll take you through. And one car in front, one car in the back, Smart with man. the sirens, and, 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 no, it's Bari Oilum. It's not, it's not a normal situation. It's Bari Oilum, because the man is sacrificing himself, he pays money, gets off a plane, gets onto another plane, all to make the min, Mincha Ma'ariv, or Shachrit, Shachrit does the same. So when he travels, he, he, he will find a shul three <coughs> times a day to go pray at? Exactly. Two times, not three times. Uh, twice. Min Hamarev together and Shachrit. Wherever it is, he plans it all out, and that's how he makes wow. it. Very good. Very good. Shh. everyone. Why are you going to flush